All right, y'all. What's up, Real Housewives of Potomac? Hopefully, I could do episode six and seven in the same damn review. Because I told y'all this show getting on my fucking nerves. Okay. Let's get into it. Starts off with Monique for episode six. Starts off with Monique popping up on a little um, meet and greet outside of her house. And after she put kicked Giselle out. And she want to know what the hell is going on. Your nosy ass. Why you got to follow people around? Just fuck it. She gone, she gone. Let it be gone. Okay. I still don't think that Giselle is jealous of her ass, but she is a little bit extra in the confessionals when she starts speaking out. When she face to face, I think she really real reserved and she, you know, okay. But in those confessionals, they be going in like so extra. It don't make no sense. And Giselle makeup is fucked up. For her to be having a goddamn beauty line coming out, she is not a good brand ambassador for her makeup. Like she been like it's been applied by a god doggone mortician or somebody, you know, at the funeral home. Like, why is her application so waxy? I don't know. Whatever. I don't know if that's a style or not, because you know I don't wear makeup. Okay, meanwhile, back at the card party, they trying to teach Michael how to play spades. Um Sharice, little twelve year old gay friend comes in. <laughs> I don't even know why he there. Who invited him? But he shows up. He shows up before Sharice did. Now, think about it. Because he wasn't outside with Sharice. I don't know. But he shows the fuck up. And then, um, Ashley, she's still going in about Robin and Juan. She's trying to pull Karen to the side. Like, girl, I need to tell you something. Like, Ashley, calm down, boo. You're getting too extra with this. But Karen goes off to the side with her. They sit over there talking. And she's telling her that, Juan is uh, creeping out on Robin. Sharice comes to join the conversation. She said, I'm only over here because I'm nosy. You know, I would have been the same way. <laughs> and they pretty much tell her, Ashley, come on now. You, you keeping your nose into this a little bit too deep. Robin joins the conversation. Like, hey, we talking about you. And it gets into a little argument. Like, Ashley, why are you so pressed about Juan and Robin's relationship? It's getting a little bit too much now at this point. But anywho... Here come Monique, nosy ass again. She got to always know what's going on. Always got to be part of the conversation. She come in like, at the same use household, we turn up over here. So, you know, they go dance. Okay, everybody go dance. I don't even know what song they was dancing to. Nobody was on beat. I don't even know if there's real music playing. This might have just been edited in at a later stage. But Ashley takes her little narrow ass over there and tries to get wine to go dance with Robin. Like, bitch, Why? Why are you so stressing over what this man and this woman do? Wanda's like, nah, she cool. She got it. Your man dancing with her. Don't go watch them. Okay. You're doing too much, Ashley. You're doing too much. So Karen and Ray talk to the realtor. Um, Karen is dead set on what she wants as far as this house is concerned. She ain't having no yard signs in her front yard. It look tacky as hell to her. She ain't letting nobody walk through her shit. You can make an appointment, sit down and have dinner with me, but you ain't walking through my house, parading people through my house. The realtor is like so done and over with her. She's like, look, we was going to sell this house for $2 million, but you got some demands that people don't want to meet. Now you're getting the bottom feeders come out. We're going to talk about that bottom feeder that showed up a little later because that was, oh, I don't even know. So Giselle meets with Cal to discuss her makeup line. She knows she wants to put the makeup on him to see what, how he looked. Whatever she put on him looked good on his skin. That was true. It blended very well. It wasn't too extra shiny. It wasn't too too dry looking. But Giselle's makeup was still hideous. Like, what the fuck is going on? It makes her look so goddamn older than she really is. Like, Giselle's like 43, 42. She's like, she's damn 60-something, 70-something. She looks so matronly. Like one of those old mothers on the mother's board. Anywho. Sharice meets, meets with Ashley, reluctantly so. And she pretty, um, when Ashley comes through the door, Sharice is trying on this gown, and she talks about how good she looks, and she feeling like Beyonce in this gown, and Ashley's like, oh, nah, that's just a little bit too much material. And you ain't got nothing yellow, something a little shorter. So she already getting under Sharice's skin. Sharice just decides to stop trying on these dresses. So when she comes out, she like, um, Ashley's like, yo, what's up with you? <laughs> She's like, look, girl, you can know my guy down on nerves. <laughs> <laughs> when she called her a little girl and she was like look just because I wasn't 
shacked up with a dude for four years who didn't want to be with me, who actually wouldn't even live with me. Don't make me a little girl. <laughs> Sharice told her she was five, five seconds from whooping her ass. Matter of fact, she told her she's five seconds from fucking her up. I was like, whoa, where'd that come from? Ashley, like, is kind of, like, dead set wrong in this situation. But I still like the fact that Ashley holds her ground against him. She looked like, girl, with your little T-Rex arms, you ain't gonna do shit to me. Can't even reach me. So, Cerise keeps going in on the fact that she ain't, ain't had a baby yet. And, um, I don't know, that's just kind of a low blow, I think, for Cerise to keep on harping on that. But, oh well. Why not Robin go to the, uh, radio interview and talking about their basketball camp that they still do together. They still do a lot of stuff together as a couple, even though they're not a couple. And even the radio DJ didn't even know what the fuck to call her. He was like, you know, this is uh, Juan Dixon and his, uh, you know, the call her friend, ex-wife, what? And Robin, you know, she here too. Um, and she said that she would prefer that people still call her his wife. Y'all been divorced for four years. What the fuck? It, really, girl? But we know, we know. So, Sharice and Giselle, they sit down and have a little meet and greet at um, Sharice's house. Everybody that's having these meet and greets with Giselle, I keep saying, we've never done this before. Like, y'all supposed to be quote unquote friends, like real friends. Like, y'all ain't never really sat down and just chilled at each other's house before. But okay, that's never here nor there. They decide at this little meet and greet to have a relationship intervention for Robin. They feel like even though Ashley was coming from like a foul place and how she was approaching the whole situation and she was going around spreading rumors about Robin and Juan, they still feel the same way as Ashley do. But since they like technically true friends of her, that she probably heard them more. So they decided to have this little intervention. And Sharice tells her about the little blow up with Ashley. Then Monique and her husband Chris go meet with the pastor that showed up at the car party. This pastor and them do, and his wife do everything for them. The, the wife was the damn realtor. They the advice counselor. They they bankers. They babysitters. <laughs> they probably was they surrogates too. I'm like, damn, what the fuck does, do y'all do for yourself? These pastors are really involved in y'all life. Are they involved with all their church members like that or just y'all? But okay. Then they like it. I love it. So they talk about Giselle for a minute. She called her Jezebel. And the pastor's like, did you call her a trick? And, you know, she was like, yeah, you know, she took me there. She reminded me of Chris' mama and how his mama be treating me. And he like, you really need to apologize to that girl because you're supposed to be a Christian woman. So she agreed to do it even though she like, I really ain't feeling it. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apologize, take my past advice. But she went on this little crying rant about how she's so tired of people judging her. Ooh, about her wealth and she was just blessed to be married to a wealthy man I'm like bitch if you stop talking about it people wouldn't be talking about it either every time you open your damn mouth you're saying something about what you got and how much you got and when you got it and what you do for your man and what your man do for you it, that's you people, people only talk about it because you keep bringing it the fuck up okay so um Karen and Ray, they go on a little date while potential family views their house. And this is like the bottom fader that I was talking about. This chick, I don't know where the fact they find this lady at. They're supposed to be viewing this $2 million house. We got the nerve to be talking about how the house looks old and outdated. Bitch, that hairstyle you had on your head was old and outdated. Your whole garb was old and outdated. And you got the nerve to be talking about this house like you don't match that bitch. Matter of fact, the house is an upgrade for you. And I think that was your husband that was with you. Man didn't talk at all. You the only one to speak. You, the house would have been a whole upgrade for them. But, okay. That's what they want us to believe. That this woman was going to try to buy that $2 million house. Girl, get the hell out of here. Anywho. So, they have the intervention. Um, and at least I'm not so low budget. <laughs> that... It wasn't just that I couldn't understand the champagne room. Because Giselle and Robin couldn't understand why the fuck she got a champagne room either. It's, what the fuck is a champagne room? Why you want a whole room just dedicated to champagne? So, but she, uh, what's the girl name? Cherie said that she would sniff it if she could. That's how much she loved champagne. And I'm like, you got a problem, girl. You got a problem. But, let's see. So, G Giselle and Robin, um, I said they didn't get it either. 
Sharice kind of briefs them on the little blow up um, with Ashley before they get to Robin. And pretty much the whole conversation, what we've been saying, these past six, seven, eleven damn episodes, Robin, girl, you in denial. You the only one want this relationship. Juan don't want it. You trying to convince yourself that he want it. Don't nobody want it but you. You just, you in denial. You so much in denial that you got to, you ain't even in a boat. You swimming in it yourself. That's how much in denial you in. Well, anyway, Sharice recommends that she talk to um, her therapist, which is Dr. Jeff. Is he like the reality TV show therapist now? Because he's on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now he on Real Housewives of Potomac. They ain't even in the same goddamn jurisdiction. But Dr. Jeff is the traveling therapist for the show. Only person who didn't go see him is Portia. So, yeah. Mm. Robin is kind of against it. She like she feel like they trying to fix her like something is broken and something needs fixing. Girl, you, you broken. You need fixing. I mean, gosh. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much the end of episode six. So, we're going to move right on along to episode seven. Um, what was the first one called? Messy Games was episode six. Episode seven is Over the River and Through the Woods. Okay, so Monique is going back to one of her old houses. I think it was their first house. And she's with her cousin Hank. Apparently, she um, wants to rent the house. She doesn't want to get rid of it. She says she has a tenant that already lives there. And there's some problems that were supposed to be fixed that Hank was supposed to take care of. He's her acting real estate manager at this point. He's her cousin that she hired to be an assistant, pretty much. And so she's really just trying to get on his head. Why are they giving Hank so much screen time? I don't know. I'm so sick of looking at his little dry ass. But, yeah, okay. Um, then Karen goes to have a meeting with uh, PAVE. I cannot remember what the acronym was. Basically, it's an organization that deals with uh, victims of sexual abuse and women's empowerment. So, Karen looks good as hell. I don't know what type of work she done had done, but she actually looks good. So, she goes in and she's pretty much sharing her story about when she was raped. And why she participates with the organization. Um, she said she forgave her rapist. And... I ain't there. Rapist, molester, none of them people. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, story made me feel a little touchy-touchy, feely-feely. So, Robin and Giselle, they rolling around through the little hood. Just, just chit-chatting like girlfriends do. And they bring up the Ashley situation about how she is dip diving into everybody's business, especially her and, and Wands and Giselle. Like, hey, we near Oz. Let's go roll up on her spot. Now this is Ashley's first night having a really busy night up in this restaurant, and things going her haywire. She's always stressing out every time they show her ass in this damn restaurant. And um. They walk in, and she's like, hey, hey. I'm, like, really happy to see you. I'm like, girl, hey. And, no, uh, Giselle is like, come on, let's go and sit down, have a sit down and talk. And Robert like, no, nah, wait a minute, sit down. Let's just get right to it. You too much of my motherfucking business. You need to mind your own business. I was like, damn, she just jumped right in. You got a restaurant full of crowd of people, and you just step up in this lady's establishment and just start going in on her. Now, y'all already know that Ashley is not the one to sit back. I don't give a how wrong we think Ashley is. I think she did wrong. She done got a little too over and beyond in her interest in Robin and Juan's affairs. They've already told her to back off a hundred times. Back off now at this point. Um, she says she's doing it out of love for Robin because it's her friend and she wants her friend to be happy. But at this point now, it just seems like you just taunting her. But still, like I said, what I do like about Ashley, Ashley don't let them punk her. <laughs> she don't let them punk her. So, Giselle um, had the nerve to bring up the beef that Sharice and Ashley have going on. That wasn't your place. It wasn't your place, Giselle. You my motherfucking girl. You, I like you. It wasn't your place to get into that conversation. But she threw that in there. And Ashley pretty much told her, that's between me and Sharice. Let me and Sharice handle that. Okay. So, I think... Rob, Giselle tried to say something about the fact that, again, that she can't have babies. She need to be worried about her failing ass restaurant and her failed sperm count or some shit like that. <laughs> and Ashley was like, really, bitch, you? You the one that want to try to say something? When your husband out here with all these fucking illegitimate ass kids, I was like, ooh. She read the hell out of her. 
she did, but okay. Um, <laughs> Sharice is now hanging out with Skylar, and she finally decides to discuss her family dynamic with her in regards to the fact that her and Eddie are about to go through a divorce, and she wanted to know how Skylar felt about that. And Skylar, you know, gave a really mature answer. She was like, look here, my daddy, based off his job, ain't been around anyway. Y'all been living apart for the last four years. I always thought that was kind of weird. So it's not going to be no adjustment for me. It's just going to be like, time going to move on. That's pretty much it. You know, Sharice is like, she feeling more emotional. She wanted Skylar to be emotional about her. Skylar was like, Oof. Ain't nothing gonna change. Ain't nothing gonna change. So she was like, well, you gotta help me tell your brother about it. Your brother's gonna be really upset about it. He probably ain't gonna be upset either, for real. Because like I said, daddy ain't been around anyhow. It's been four years, and he been living in a whole nother state. He ain't had his job there in I don't know how long, so why he can come back home? Because he don't want to be with you. That's pretty much it. So, Chris and Monique go fishing. Why is Monique dressed to the nines going fishing? She out here by this lake. All the goddamn mud. She got on this snow white, super long sundress. Makeup, her nails done, diamonds blinging, going fishing. You don't dress down for that girl. Your man dress down. You don't dress down there for that girl. See, that's what we be talking about. You be out here showboating. That's why people talk about you the way they do. But they out here fishing and, um, these old funky ass fish. She catch he thought was a catfish, but it was an eel. So you heard with these old nasty funky ass fish in this nice little white dress, and you got this eel flapping all around, and your dress dragging all in the mud and the dirt. And I'm like, girl, come on. I don't even know what the whole point of that. Oh, she said it was because they wanted a date. They need to date more. Okay, whatever. Okay, so Karen is doing community service with the little kids. They are here building up community gardens. Giselle come and join her. Um Karen drops a little info that Monique had called her a trick. <laughs> and Giselle's like, really? I didn't hear that. She waits till I left to say that. Yeah, she did, but still. So now Giselle all her fee fees about her calling her a trick. Y'all don't like each other. You should be expected to be called names by somebody you don't like. <laughs> but the fact that um Giselle said Monique could only speak words to have four letters, I was like, girl, trick has five. You really just said that she it only got four letters. But, okay, Giselle, you're making me look bad right now because I've been rooting for you. But anyway, Robin and Juan discuss the camp. Um, Robin and her looks real good in this episode, despite the fact that her hairstylist be fucking her up in the other episode. But she looked really good in this episode. And I don't know, it's kind, of, it kind of tension in the whole little scene. Then Juan walked away, and he was just like, I am done with this shit. I'm too old for this. I'm tired of living like this. It's almost if the show is trying to make him stay with Robin just for the sake of the show. He's like, look, I want to be happy, move on with somebody who really love and care for me, and if it wasn't for my damn kids, I'd have been gone. And I heard I said it. I've been saying it since day one. Juan does not want to be in that relationship. Robin has him lying to the kids, said that they still married. They got divorced four fucking years ago. And although she claims she don't care about him out here creeping with other women, she wanted to punch Ashley in the face when she said it. What you mad for, boo, if he wasn't your man? So, yeah. It's, the shit gonna hit the fan when it come out that Juan is like, I don't wanna, I ain't got time for this. I'm ready for that. Ready to be gone. So, Ashley meets with her mama and her brother. And you know, I, I try not to be judgmental. Her brother ugly as a motherfucker. I mean, he seemed like a nice person, but he is unfucking attractive. So... <laughs> I have to judge this particular time. But anyway, he's doing good things. He's going to go to the Dominican. They're going to, like, um, do some water irrigation, put some fresh, has, you know, do some programs to give him some fresh, clean water, some other things down there. So, you know, he's doing big things. Big things pop up for him. Good thing. Um, she briefs them on the drama and says that she's going to fight fire with fire. And I'm like, girl, what you about to do? Um, then Robin meets with Dr. Jeff and and what's her name Cherise and that's all I can say again is Robin is in clear denial she breaks down crying just from a basic conversation he wouldn't even I would also say therapizing therapy is not therapizing is not a word <laughs> he 
wasn't even counseling her on the therapy session. They just having a casual conversation. And she breaks down crying. She needs some therapy. She, she do. Take it from somebody that's in therapy. Well, I ain't been in a while. I need to go back probably. Yeah. But yeah, she needs some therapy. Okay. So, the Pave the Way event is under. And Ashley comes in and is dressed that is like too short for the occasion. But she still look cute. Um, and I'm still like wondering like okay what the fuck is Ashley about to do but she said she's gonna fight fire with fire Giselle and Robin coming together and Ashley came up like hey girl hey she was so extra friendly and polite and nice she said she's gonna kill him with kindness I was like okay Ashley that's not what I was expecting but good on you um, Robin said that, you know, I was really, um, happy the fact that she did speak. It did feel kind of awkward, you know, considering what we got going on, but I'm glad she did, was, a uh, woman enough to speak, and Giselle is like, girl, fuck that, I ain't here for that. They take that old corny bullshit on somewhere. <laughs> um, then, Sharice and Monique come in. Robin, Giselle, Sharice, they are sitting at one table. Monique. Ashley and Karen at another. Um, Karen says she, something happened with the seating arrangements. Girl, we know you did that on purpose just so nothing would blow up because you know that Ashley's having beef with Robin, Sharice, and Giselle. Monique is having beef, beef with Giselle. Keep them separated. That was the smartest thing to do. Nobody tripped off of it though, probably except for me. Um, Don Lemon shared his story about being raped by his mother best friend or his mother's boyfriend something like that I didn't I didn't really write down what his story was about um then Karen got there and shared her story a little bit more in detail and the girls were looking like they were all shocked they didn't know this about her and they said it made me kind of tear up again you know I get kind of emotional at times and afterwards you know Ashley's still trying to be very polite even Monique was trying to be polite, and Ashley was trying to, I guess, be polite to Sharice, and Giselle was like, no, nah, I don't even talk to her right now. Sharice was being a bitch and ignoring her, um, and it might have turned left, but Giselle was pretty much saying, like, you can see she ignoring you, so just gonna leave it alone. Okay, that's fine and dandy. So Monique was like, okay, well, I know we're not gonna talk about this right now, but I would like to talk to you later. And it's pretty much about the trick incident because she said she's going to apologize. And now Giselle knows about the trick statement. So she was like, well, can I get your phone number or we can get together later? Giselle was like, um. She said, well, I got my phone right here. You know, you can put your number here. And Giselle was like, mm. She said, you're not going to give me your number? She said, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I mean, I might give it to you, but it ain't going to be right now. I was like, but damn. Giselle is acting real fucking shady. I mean, like I said, that's, she's still one of my favorite characters. But, uh, yeah, she was acting like a real bitch this episode here. And I uh, just have to be real. Monique, Monique came real respectful to her, I thought. And I'm not a Monique fan, for real. But uh, Giselle was already being, you know, messy, interjecting in Ashley and Sharice. Like, Sharice ain't got a mouth of her own, but... Yeah. That was the whole episode. Holla fucking you. I got all this shit in within 24 minutes. See y'all next week for Real Housewives of Potomac. I think we go to 10 episodes. I'll be so glad when this shit is over. I swear for goodness. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Peace.